We have, through the 19th century, a series of expeditions going out, filling up the blank spaces on the map of the world. The Royal Society, the Royal Geographical Society, university academics are clamouring for information about meteorology, about geology, about the natural world in the Antarctic. There's no doubt too that exploration in this period was also driven by national prestige and imperial rivalry. There was a revolution in transport and communications. The telegraph system enabled a story to be transmitted from New Zealand to London in a matter of hours. We have modern newspapers like the Daily Mirror with massive front page images. And people like Alfred Harmsworth, who would later found the Daily Mail, sponsored polar expeditions. There's no doubt that personal ambition too drove the explorers who went to the South Pole. Scott really was interested in science. He'd been very involved in the scientific research on the Discovery Expedition. But as one can tell from his later actions, Scott's personal interest, Scott's own goal himself, was clearly to get the pole. Scott said to the scientists, if we get the pole, then everything that we achieve will be more highly regarded. But if we fail to get the pole, then even the best work will be neglected. And of course the irony is Scott not having achieved the return journey. And the science expanded to fill the space, so exactly the opposite happened. The science became the thing that the expedition was remembered for.